Mark Bailey, Head of Credit Strategy and Research at FIG, is out the front of the RBA with reporter Carson Scott mm. waiting the True. rates decision. Yeah. Carson, the big day, uh, under half an hour now to go. Uh, as we've been saying, you know, no change expected, but it's all about that statement. Yes, it is all about the statement. If we can read it without getting soaked to the skin, here comes the rain, not the sun. Uh, Mark Bailey, though, let's be honest about it. Since we last met, uh, the banks have done an interesting thing out of cycle rate increases. So put that alongside the last rate cut several months ago, you have effectively cancelled out that rate cut because at the time the banks didn't pass it on in full either. So net net, two actions. Don't pass it on in full last time. Raise out of cycle. That's negated one cut this year, correct? Absolutely, and the, RB the RBA has consistently talked about that for the last several years, that they will always look about the cost of capital to the end consumer, whether that's business or whether that's uh, people uh, that are buying their houses. And because the, the banks have done that out-of-cycle in interest rate, it's a de facto hike by the RBA. Mm -hmm. So that obviously puts them more on an on a easing bias, and, th and there may be some commentary on that today. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, so the last paragraph, what, open and willing to respond, uh, words to that effect? I mean, what were you looking for specifically? Yeah, I don't, I don't think there'll be exactly any, any change probably to that last paragraph, but maybe there's some commentary in terms of, you know, how banks and the, and the cost of capital is impacting, you know, businesses and consumers in the Australian market. You know, it's, it's, it's almost kind of irrelevant what's happening on a global basis. Trump's come in. We're not seeing any kind of inflation coming through. There's weak wage data out of the states with the non-farm payrolls, same domestically as well. When you say it's almost irrelevant. Everyone knows there is no game in town quite like the Fed. Uh, you can't effectively purport to move ahead of them and believe that there's going to be not something you know, to offset that once they move in. So would you rather just not be prepared to believe December is live for the Fed? When that happens, hopefully we'll see that US dollar trade sort of locked and loaded and not sort of showing any sign of leakage. Uh, I, don't, I don't think so, because I, I think the Fed hike in December's already priced in. Mm -hmm. I think the key determinant of how that uh, US dollar will trade against the Aussie is going to be the blue dot plots mm -hmm. and how gradual they are going forward in 2017, 2018. We still believe in the dot plots. <laughs> well, we, I mean, we, two years of discredited dot plots. Well, you know, now they're back in town. Well, how come? <laughs> Why? They're the best thing we've got, uh, and yet, yes, you know, people will argue that uh, the Fed's credibility has been shot. Um, but again, you know, they've, they've, they've steered the path as they see fit in terms of the data that's come along. And I think they've done a pretty good job in terms of the data. I don't think it's been that strong enough to, to hike more than once this year. The China story, we were just remarking before, the Australian dollar in trade-weighted terms uh, is pretty steady and relatively elevated. It hasn't unwound. And then again, you've got commodity prices that have stayed up, despite the naysayers saying they weren't sustainable. Talk to me about China 2017. Is this a wheeze by Xi Jinping to stay on in power, to do a sop to the cronies in the Communist Party and say, I'll do some more infrastructure? But then when he's voted back in to drop that pledge, go back to fighting corruption, and suddenly the commod story looks shaky. Uh, I, I think the commodity story holds up. I mean, especially if you've got Trump as well in, in the U.S. No policies on that. The bond market moved on. No policies whatsoever other than hot air. Absolutely agree. But in terms of if you believe what he's going to... And that's to tightening, by the way. That is tightening for the U.S. economy already before the Fed. It, it is, but in terms in terms of the commodity sector, it, it's sucking a lot of raw materials into the states. Mm -hmm. So yes, China may may slow down, but you know even six percent to six and a half percent is still not a bad clip on on that Chinese economy. Seven's not the magic number in terms of keeping everyone in check and not seeing riots break out. No, I don't I don't think so. I think I think seven's a, a long time in past. I think you know six to six and a half is more realistic, and I think we'll get to there. And if we get close to that figure, I think it's still enough for Australian uh, economy to do well. Is Renzi on their radar? Do they talk about? Italy in the last 24, 48 hours, or do they skirt that, go more broad brush in terms of e EU influences? Oh, I, I think they'll probably be talking more US election, mm -hmm. and probably, obviously, Renzi, uh, Austrian election. I don't think it'll be a big factor, but the key, the key factor out of uh, the Italian referendum is the impact on the banks, and the fact that they may not get the bank recapitalization done, and if you start to get kind of contagion in the banking system, that's when you start to see it, it, it reverberating around the world. Offset of that, though, of course, the key effect of the Trump election, uh, pull back on banking reforms in the US, so size of relief there versus maybe some pain across the Atlantic. Yeah, but you, so you are hopefully going to see a bit of uh, relief in terms of regulations, maybe the repeal of the Dodd-Frank, you know, hopefully increasing profitability. But again, from a, maybe a credit point of view, 
Are you going to see a riskier bank going forward, less capital, more tra more capital towards trading, uh, more uh, likelihood of, bi of big losses? Um, so, you know, it's, it swings and roundabouts, but in terms of their cost of capital and, and the reason why our domestic banks are hiking uh, out of cycle is because you've seen that uh, increase in the yield curve. The underlying uh, risk-free rate has increased, and so their cost of capital has increased as well. Stay dry. Uh, enjoy the statement, the last one for the year. Have a good, uh, have a good decision. Thanks, Carson. See you soon. Happy New Year. You too. There we have it. Here comes the rain proper. Back to you in studio, dry uh, as ever, and we'll be back at half past. Fantastic, Carson. Thanks Alan very Mitchell. much. <laughs> Keep dry. Thank we'll look forward to talking right. to you again Thank at you. half past there. Thanks very much, Carson. Right. Now, we mentioned there the Aussie dollar is uh, trading slightly.